So this is my second video about the total solar eclipse that's coming up on Monday, April 8th, 2024. And this video is specifically for people in Toronto, Southern Ontario, Montreal, Southern Quebec, and the surrounding region, information that you can use to get ready for the big day. People who live in upstate New York or Western New York State may also find this video to be useful. Now, in my earlier video, I talked about the science behind eclipses, and I included things like safety tips, photography tips, weather prospects along the path of totality, and I listed some useful web resources. So I won't repeat that stuff here. Again, please do click on my earlier video if you haven't seen it already. Now, a big swath of North America will get to see a partial eclipse on April the 8th, but the total eclipse will only be visible from a narrow path called the path of totality. The path of totality is about 150 kilometers wide, give or take, that's about 90 miles, and as you can see, the path cuts across central and eastern North America. And what's especially noteworthy for folks in southern Ontario and the surrounding area is that the path cuts right across Lake Erie and Lake Ontario, covering bits of Ontario and Quebec. It also keeps going further east into Atlantic Canada, but in this video I'm just going to focus on the area you see here on this map. And by the way, for Canadians, it has been a long wait. The last time a total solar eclipse was visible in Canada, at least from below the Arctic Circle, was way back in 1979. Good evening. It lasted barely three minutes. But for many of us, it was a thrill to remember a lifetime. Of course, we're talking about this morning's total eclipse of the sun by the moon, the first such solar spectacular over Canada in seven years, and the last in this century. Manitoba was the best place to see it, and the thousands who traveled there were not disappointed. I was a little kid at the time, and yes, I was bitter because I lived in the wrong part of Canada. Anyway, back to this April's eclipse. If you live outside the path of totality, you'll see a partial eclipse. If you live inside the path of totality, you'll see a total eclipse. But the duration of totality will depend on how close you are to the so-called center line, that's the imaginary line running along the middle of the path of totality. If you're right on the center line, you'll experience somewhere around 3 minutes and 45 seconds of totality. I should also mention what time of day this is happening. For the locations that I'm talking about in this video, the total phase of the eclipse will start at about 3.20 p.m., varying by a few minutes depending on your exact location. Totality will come a few minutes earlier if you're further to the southwest, and a few minutes later if you're further to the northeast. And the partial phases last for a bit more than an hour before and after totality. I'll put the exact times up on the screen for a handful of locations shortly. Now one thing I want to emphasize is the difference between a partial eclipse and a total eclipse. Let's take Ottawa as an example. Ottawa lies outside the path of totality, but only by around 50 kilometers, so in fact Ottawa will get a 99% partial eclipse. Now, that sounds pretty good, but because the sun is so bright, even with 1% of the sun's disk poking through, you still have quite a lot of light. Let me try to illustrate this with some photos I took on Easter Island during the eclipse back in 2010. Here's the scene a few minutes before totality. I actually don't know the precise percentage of the sun that was covered at this moment, but it was likely around 99%. It might have been a little bit more. Now, it's a cool photo, and it was a cool thing to witness, but compare it to a few minutes later when the sun is completely covered by the moon. That's totality. And the difference really is like the difference between night and day. And even if that's a slight exaggeration, let me say this. It's only during the total phase of the eclipse that you get to see the sun's wispy outer atmosphere known as the corona. I'm sure you've seen it many times in photographs of solar eclipses. To see the corona, you have to be in the path of totality. And now the big question, where are you going to watch this April's eclipse from? Let's go over a few facts and figures that might help you make that decision. Here I'm relying on the excellent maps in this terrific Atlas of Solar Eclipses by Michael Zeiler and Michael Bakich, with some additional figures from the Observer's Handbook published every year by the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada. I've already mentioned that Ottawa gets a 99% partial eclipse, and as you get closer to the path of totality, that figure inches closer to 100%. So Kitchener-Waterloo, for example, gets 99.3%. London, Ontario, gets 99.7%. 
and Toronto gets 99.9%. Talk about a close call. But still, 99.9% is not 100%, so let's keep going. Hamilton, located just a bit southwest of Toronto, is inside the path of totality, and will get just under two minutes worth. Does that mean the roads will be clogged up with people driving from Toronto and Mississauga down to Hamilton? All I can say is, if you're one of the people trying to get from Toronto to Hamilton on the big day, please, please don't wait until the last minute. Now let's keep going. For areas west of Hamilton, one good bet might be the area around Turkey Point or Long Point, which sticks out into Lake Erie. From there, you get about 3 minutes and 20 seconds of totality. And if you're closer to Lake Ontario, well, if you keep going past Hamilton, things improve. From St. Catharines, you get 3 minutes and 13 seconds of totality. And from Niagara Falls, you get 3 minutes and 30 seconds of totality. And let's face it, Niagara Falls would be a pretty cool place to watch the eclipse from. And down in Fort Erie, across the river from Buffalo, you get just about 3 minutes and 45 seconds. And if you're east of Toronto, well, Kingston, Ontario, gets 3 minutes and 2 seconds of totality. Now, Montreal is a very interesting case. Downtown Montreal is inside the path of totality, so from there you can get around a minute's worth of totality, depending on exactly where you are. The further south you can get on the island of Montreal, the longer you get. But note that the northern suburbs of Montreal, including the entire island of Laval, are outside the path. So again, we might expect traffic issues. Don't be surprised if the streets are clogged up with people from northern parts of Montreal trying to get to downtown Montreal. And by the way, things are even better if you cross over to the south side of the river. The Montreal suburbs on the south shore of the St. Lawrence will get about two minutes of totality, and if you can get to Sherbrooke in the eastern townships, you can get three minutes and 20 seconds of totality. Now, let's recap some of those figures. And now, just a short version of the standard safety message. During the partial phases of the eclipse, when some part of the sun's disk is visible, you do need to use eclipse glasses like these to safely view the eclipse. Now, during totality, when the sun is completely covered by the moon, then you can put these away. During totality, it's safe to look at the eclipse. You can even use binoculars if you want to. But the moment totality is over, the moment the first little bit of the sun comes back out from behind the moon, then you need to put the eclipse glasses back on. And my final bit of advice, especially if this is your first total solar eclipse, don't try to do too much. Totality doesn't last very long, it'll be over before you know it. I really recommend putting the cameras away, just enjoy it, just look up, let this spectacle wash over you, live in the moment, and just enjoy the eclipse. And here's hoping for clear skies on April the 8th.